QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Reconciliation Opening Balance Problem. Get ready and some coffee because we're getting the books on track with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left hand side in the favorites. Right click in that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab. Right click in the P&L profit and loss to open a link in a new tab. Same with the trusty TB trial balance. We will tab to the right. Close up the hamburger and change that range up top going from 010124 tab, 022924 tab. Let's do this on a month by month breakout and run it. Then we'll tab to the right, closing the hamburger, changing the range, 010124 tab, 022924 tab, selecting the drop down months and run it. And then we'll tab to the right. Close the hamburger, change the range, 010124 tab, 022924 tab, drop down and months. Let's run it. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. And let's go back to the balance sheet. We're now continuing on with the bank reconciliation process for the first month, that being January. We have this beginning balance issue that we're going to address now. So note that the reconciliation is basically taking what we have currently on the books, 88, 645, 27 as of January and reconciling it to what is on the bank side of things. On the bank side of things, we have the 61, 241, 85. The difference between the two should be simply outstanding items, checks and deposits that we know on our side, which are not on the bank side, but we have this beginning balance issue. So let's go back into the reconciliation and recap that issue. So we're going to go down to the transactions. We're in the reconcile tab. We're going to resume the reconciling that we started in a prior presentation and the edit info. We have the beginning balance. That's part of an, our issue. It's zero here. It's 30,000 over here. So that's an issue. And then we plugged in the 61,241,85. We just put the ending balance on the bank statement. That's the normal process. As of the cutoff date, 131.24, we didn't put anything down below in these items. We have the recap up top, the statement ending balance. That's just what we typed in from the bank statement as of the cutoff January 31st. We have the clear balance, which is consisting of this formula. And this formula should match the summary that's basically on the bank statement. Beginning balance plus additions minus subtractions. So you can see the beginning balance is a problem with the 30,000. The additions, we have the payments that we have are 106. So let's take a look at that. 106.829 minus what we have over here, do, 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 which is the 111829. 
and we have a difference of 5,000. So we have a bit of an issue on that one. And then the deposits are at 168.70.85. That should match uh, what we're over here. Let me do that one more time. We're at, uh, we're at, we're at, <laughs> where did I go? We're at, we're at the deposit should be 146.70.85. So over here, we're at the deposits uh, 168. That's because I have this checked off. Let me uncheck that. 143.70.85. And then we're at 143.70.85. Okay, so we have an issue between the payments and uh, the beginning balance. So note that this beginning balance problem really just means that we didn't get this in the system as kind of the beginning balance part, but it's still showing up here as our beginning balance that we put into the system, which was 25,000 instead of 30,000. So if this was 30,000, then all what I could do is check it off and just say, okay, this beginning balance is just gonna be included here and, and it'll be part of the deposits and I'll be okay with that. I'll note that in my first bank reconciliation and be able to move forward. So, but even doing that, I still have a problem because this 25,000 is not 30,000. It should be the 30,000, which is the beginning balance uh, over here. Why is it not 30,000? Well, because we pulled in this 25,000 from the prior accounting system which had 25,000 on the balance sheet. So we had to put 25,000 in place because that's the thing that we needed to be in balance to bring over the books. What's the difference between the 25,000 and the 30,000? Well, it's gonna be the outstanding items you would think as of the prior bank reconciliation date, which in this case is December 31st, uh, 2023. So in other words, there were outstanding checks prior to that point in time and that's why we also have a difference between these cleared items we couldn't find these cleared items on our bank rec uh, in our books and the general rule is if it's on the bank side it should be on our book side or we should be adding it so so but this beginning balance has a special issue because these checks weren't actually written in january they were written in december the prior period so that's going to be the issue this 25 that we put on top here is representing uh the beginning balance which includes the outstanding items which in our case are those two checks now note when i check that off because those two things net out my difference is at zero so we could do that i could say okay i'm just gonna it's my difference is zero i'm gonna move forward Although it's not perfect to do that because I still don't really understand why I have 25,000 instead of 30,000 and why I, I have this 4,000 and 1,000 that has cleared. That's one problem. The second problem is that if these two amounts had not cleared, meaning if they were outstanding and they remain outstanding, they were outstanding in December, they remain outstanding through January, then you're not going to be able to do that method of simply uh, checking it off and be exactly in balance. So what we would like to do instead is really put these two on the books. We would like to put them on the books as of the date the check was written or possibly as of the date of the prior cutoff period like we did with the beginning balances uh, as of 12-31-23 in our case. So that's what, we'll, that's what we will do here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, let's put these on the books. So we'll go back on over and say, if this 25,000, I want to get to the same 25,000, but I want to represent it as 30,000 on the deposit here for my beginning balances and two checks of 5,000 so that I have my audit trail of the two checks that were written in the prior period. I can see that they cleared in the current period. And then if I want to go back to the prior accounting system, I can get more detail about those two checks. All right. So to do that, Let's go ahead and leave here. So I'm going to say finish later. So I'm going to uncheck this for now. So it's so and then save for later. And then let's go back into my chart of accounts. And then in the chart of accounts, I'm going to go into the checking account and look at the good old register. And I'm going to imagine that I went back to my prior accounting system and looked up those two checks, which I'm going to enter as just basically expense forms because I don't want to enter a check number. 
And let's, I'm going to put them in there as of 12, uh, 31 to 3 in our practice problem. You may want to put them in there as of the date the actual checks were written. But my thought would be I'm going to put them in there this way. And then if I have a question about those two checks, I can always go back to the prior accounting system and look them up. This is just to give me a, a note that this is coming from the prior accounting system and I want a reference to the prior accounting system. So then I'm going to say the, uh, the uh, name I'm going to say is Epiphone. Now Epiphone is a vendor that we buy and then I'll say this is a prior period uh, expense form. And so do do do. And then I'm going to say that this was for 4,000. Okay. And then Epiphone is who we buy inventory from. So you might think, well, I have to put that to inventory. But we're not going to put it to inventory because when I put the beginning balances on the books, uh, I already accounted for inventory as of the cutoff date of 1231. Inventory, we made it correct by doing our, our journal entry process. So what I want to do is just have a clearing account. All my balances are correct already. I'm just going to clear this out to the opening balance equity account, which is that generic account that QuickBooks makes up, right? So I'm going to put the two checks to opening balance equity, and then I'm going to make an adjustment to that 30,000. The other side also go into opening balance equity, which will net out opening balance equity back to zero is going to be the idea. All right, so let's get an idea of what that'll look like. We're going to say this is going to be a prior period adjustment checking account. The other side is going to go to opening balance equity. Let's save it. And then if I go to my balance sheet and run it, and we had an adjustment to the checking account and we had an adjustment we can see down here. So now there is a balance in the opening balance equity. I'm actually going to open up the general ledger report to see the detail that way. I'm going to go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate it. And then I'm going to go to reports on the left hand side, close up the hamburger, go all the way down to the accounting reports, which are for my accountant open up the general ledger and then I will type in here the date of the transaction 123123 to 123123 and just see that activity. So in the checking account we have this expense form uh, for the 4000 and then in opening balance equity we had a transaction for opening balance equity do, 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 here of the 4,000 right there. All right, let's do the other one now. So I'm gonna do the second one. I'm gonna go back to the first tab. We're back in the register again, and let's select the drop down and do another expense form and say this one is as of 12, 31, 2, 3 as well. This is a prior period uh, expense form. And I'm going to say this was for the 1000. And I'm also going to say the payee is Epiphone again, but I'm going to put it once again to opening balance equity. So same transaction, opening balance equity. I'm going to run that. And now if I take a quick look on the balance sheet and run that again, we should have in opening balance equity now the 5000. So there's our 5000 in opening balance equity. And then up top, we still have, we made a change to the checking account as well. So now what I'm going to do, if I go back into my register and scroll up in the checking account, let's run this one again. Uh, we have our activity here. Now this 25,000 we put in the checking account, I'm going to now change to 30,000. And the other side is still going to be going to opening balance equity. I could do this two different ways. I could, I could just change this transaction, this number to 30,000 and the other side from this deposit form went to opening balance equity, or I can make another transaction, basically uh, another deposit form for 5,000, right? And the other side going to opening balance equity. We might be a little skeptical. We could drill down on this form and just change it to 30,000, but maybe we don't want to go back and do that. That might seem a little scary. So maybe instead we add another one of 5,000, which will be on the deposit side of things. Let's do that. So I'm going to go over and this time I'm going to make a deposit as of 1231. And this is going to be for uh, beginning balance, balance 
uh, adjustment for outstanding checks, let's say, and it's going to be a deposit of 5000 and the other side is going to go to opening balance equity. So now opening balance equity is going to net out back down to zero. So let's go ahead and save that one. And if I go back to my balance sheet and run this, we adjusted the checking account should be basically back to where it was before and opening balance equity should be back to zero. If I look at the detail in my general ledger and run that one, you can see that basically these two things net out in the checking account. We have the 5,000 deposit and then these expenses that are going to check net out against it, leaving us once again to what the beginning balance was, which was 25,000, but providing the detail that we can then check off to see the audit trail in the bank reconciliation. And then in opening balance equity, we have a similar uh, kind of activity here. Here's the deposit, and then here's the 4,000 and the 1,000 and the 5,000 here that are netting out against each other. Okay, now let's go back into the first tab, hamburger. Let's go into our transactions again, into the reconcile and close the hamburger. We're going to reconcile again, and then I'm going to resume the reconciliation process. So now what we have here is I, I have these two that net out against each other. So now I have these two expense forms, which I can check off, boom, boom. And then if I go back to this side, we now have these two that we can check off as things that were on the bank statement that are clearing. That would give us the total checks of 111829. Uh, uh, so that's going to be the 111829. So now these two numbers tie out and it's just the beginning balance that we're off by the 30,000. Now I'm not going to get into trying to get this beginning balance to be 30,000, but rather just say, I'm going to check these two off as another increase, which is on the deposit side of things. So I'll just basically check these two off and boom, now we're in balance. We have an, an exact uh, match uh, of the statement balance and the cleared balance. And that's what you want that to be. You want that to be exactly zero. Remember, if that's anything other than zero, even if it's off like by $2, the $2 that it's off by could be a combination of a, like 20 checks and like three deposits or something, which means you're losing the detail that's used to create the other side of the transaction, like the entire income statement. Also note that we have a bunch of stuff here that hasn't been checked off, remembering that those are the items that we expect to be outstanding. Those are the, the that might not be wrong. Those are the, the items that we think are gonna be uh, the, the, the difference between the bank balance and our balance. So the next thing we can do, of course, when this is finished is we can finish it. When that's a green zero, we can finish it. When we do that, we'll actually be able to generate the reports. Remembering that this process is important, even if you don't know what the reports are doing, that because you're reconciling here, but the report is the bank reconciliation. It's gonna provide us the difference between the bank balance and the book balance, which of course will be the things that we didn't check off here We'll finish it next time, so we'll put us in suspense now, and then we'll take a look at the actual reports that will be constructed when we finalize uh, next time. So for now, I am once gonna, once again again gonna once again again gonna save it for later. Save it for later, and then we'll finish it off. If we jump on over to the trial balance, note that although we entered financial transactions, we didn't actually make any changes to the end numbers because the transactions netted out against each other. Those transactions being in the checking account where we adjusted essentially the beginning balances and had an equal and opposite adjustment to the checks that were entered. And then in the opening balance equity where the other side offset each other as well. So we're back to zero, the starting point there as well. So if your numbers tied out last time, they should still be good this time.